I started the diet about a month later. I told I told him I was like, Dad, you need to do this. Like, I'm not giving you an option. You gotta go carnivore. And so <laughs> he went carnivore and he's been loving it so much. He feels like he's young again. He's lifting weights, he's running, he's just moving so good. And then my mom as well, like I got her to start doing it and she's feeling great. She's still incorporating a few like plants here and there. She's more on like keto paleo, but still, still doing great. All right. Good morning. Ryan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey man. Sorry about that. I, my, I got in my computer was, uh, I've been out of town. The computer was completely powered down. And so I had to try to get the thing charged up and running. So we're back anyway. Well, welcome. Thanks for doing this, by the way. And uh, so you got your Michigan State hat on there. So you definitely represent. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess, you know, I think the interesting, and we've had a, a number of uh, athletes recently that have done really well doing a carnivore diet, you know, and it's one of those things where, you know, a lot of people say, well, you can't do that. You know, you have to have. You know, you have to eat this way. You have to eat a bunch of carbohydrates and stuff. And you're doing uh, the decathlon, which some people argue is the, the the decathletes have often called the greatest athletes on the planet. At, you know, at time because of the different dis disciplines you have to do. Um, and you've been able to do that. You know, at least my understanding is using a carnivore diet, and you've done very successful at that. So, if you don't mind, just just give us a little bit of your background. How did you get into decath becoming a decathlete and uh, what made you decide to try a carnivore type diet? Yeah. So I, um, originally in high school, I was a pole vaulter and I would do hurdles, long jump a little bit. I started playing around with shot put just cause it was fun to throw a, a rock, you know? And so that led me into talking to college coaches about pursuing the decathlon because they don't offer it in high school. So um, I got a hold of the Michigan State coach and Michigan State has a good history with successful decathletes. Um, we've won the Big Ten championship three out of the four past years. So and in the decathlon. So the coach is great there. And I um, so I went there to pursue decathlon and um, dealing with the carnivore. I was originally allergic to gluten, peanut butter, um, milk, eggs, like all sorts of stuff when I was little. And um, it was really great. My mom got an allergy panel done for me. We figured all that stuff out, cut everything out of my diet. And then I was eating pretty much just rice and oatmeal as my carbohydrates. And I would eat fruit as well. and that was working fine for me until I got to college. And then I started to eat way too much of that rice and oatmeal because I had started looking into like the bodybuilding nutrition and hearing this, Oh, I'll just eat chicken and rice. You'll get huge. So I started eating way too much chicken and rice and um, it just kind of started to slice up my stomach and I was getting like really bad indigestion and struggling with a lot of, low energy. And I, I didn't know why at the time. And then eventually sophomore year, which was, or junior year, which was last year, I stumbled upon a video of someone talking about their Crohn's disease being cured through carnivore. And then I researched more and found that more and more people are talking about all these diseases that they're solving with carnivore and how much energy they're getting and how much it's just making them feel better in the mental clarity. And I, I was just so interested in it. I was like, okay, this is, this has got to at least help a little bit with what I'm feeling. So I decided to make the jump and it's worked out great. The, um, I mean, when you try to bulk up as a decathlete, you can't get too heavy because then you can't run. I mean, you know, it's one of the, I mean, you can't run oh, 1600, yeah. right? I mean, it's uh, the 1500 or 1600. I can't remember the, it's, it's a 15, yeah. 1500. Yeah. So you're, you're, uh, you know, you've got that sort of, sort of narrow window of what you can be, uh, size wise. Um, so how did, uh, switching that diet, it fixed your gut. How did it affect your performance? Did you find it you were weaker or slower? What was it? What was it? How did that transition work? 
I didn't really feel much of a change in speed or strength. If anything, I felt that I improved my speed and improved my strength because there's that first little window where you lose that excess carbohydrate weight and you lose about like five to 10 pounds immediately. And I lost that sludge and I maintained my strength. And so my strength to weight ratio went up and then I was able to run faster because I weighed less. And then I also was noticing that like in the gym, my lifts were going up. I was feeling stronger and I was able to lift heavier weight for longer. Well, I mean, that's obviously a benefit. And how did, uh, you know, how did your performance, I mean, did you, did it impact, you know, cause you got the 10 events, uh, like I, you know, I've done some of the, I used to throw a shot put or tried to, and it's really hard. I mean, for anybody that doesn't, it's really, really technically very challenging to throw a big, long, you think it would just be, you stand up there and grunt it out there, but there's so much tremendous technique that goes into that. Um, did you notice it helping one event more than the other? Did, did you see a trade off on where you, where you saw the biggest gains? Um, I think the biggest gains is in the recovery aspect because decathlon is all about how fast can you recover because it's, it's two days and you got to recover between the first day and the second day or else your second day is just going to suffer immensely. And I remember competing indoor season. We do the heptathlon and it's only seven events. And I did the first four events. And then the next day you would do only three events. I woke up for the three event day and I just felt like crap and my body just felt destroyed. And this was before I was doing carnivore. And then I switched the carnivore diet and we started doing decathlon. So we're adding three more events. You're doing five on the first day, five on the second day. After the first day, I woke up for the second day and I almost felt brand new. I felt super fresh. I felt ready to go. So I think the recovery aspect is just huge. And that's another thing is you have 10 events to train for. You have to constantly be training for all 10 events. And the more time you get to train, the better you're going to become in the future. So being able to recover after practice is so huge. Hey, Ryan, when you compete and you do those 10 events, is it always the same five events on day one and always the same five events on day two? Yeah, it's a it's a specific order. What what is that order just for my education? Yeah, it starts with the 100 and then it goes to long jump, shot put, high jump and then the 400 ends day 1. And day 2 is the 110 hurdles, the discus, the pole vault, the javelin and then the 1500. So you end, you end each day with the longest run basically and I'm sure that 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 feels great to finish on that. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> it's yeah, it's better to, than starting with it, right? Well, yeah, you'd be blown out if you tried to try to do a hard four hundred. I know run out, run out, whenever I got to run like four hundred, it's pretty tough to recover from for a while. Did you so like? Would you see like you know in the, the day one everybody's kind of equal, and then day two you start to pick up ground because of the better recovery? Is that did you see like relatively higher scores? Um, I was the events on day two were always better for me, but I definitely noticed that. Usually, like, by the time you get to pole vault, which is the seventh event, you're not going to be jumping a personal best during a decathlon because you're, like, seven events deep. Whereas I was finding that I was able to break my record and jump higher than I've ever jumped before in the middle of a decathlon. And so, like, yeah, it's it's super helpful to have that. So just, and I, I know the decathlon scoring, it's, I can't remember, like 8,000 points is considered like pretty good. I mean, I'm not sure what the levels are, but I know, I know it's on a, on a number. And I don't know what the record is, but like 8,900 or something. I'm not yeah. sure what the record is, but how did your scoring go pre-carnivore to post-carnivore? Can you say, can you tell how much percentage better you got on all these events? Well, for that's the, that's the thing is, so for the decathlon, I had never run decathlon until last year because I was always getting injured or building so much like yeah I was just getting I was just getting injured and I was broken and damaged after the indoor season where I couldn't compete in the outdoor season and so I would say the carnivore diet actually helped me be able to do a decathlon because my body was able to stay recovered and healthy all the way through indoor season and into outdoor season 
And um, like it's, I I definitely have seen an improvement in all of my events though. And so like, yeah, I, I definitely think that it's helping out a lot. And especially for the running events, which I didn't think was going to be the case. I thought that like I had this false reality where, oh man, like you're not carbo loading. You're going to run slow. You're going to be fatigued. You're not going to sprint as good. And like in reality, like that's just not true at all. So like, just as an example, like what was your 400 time before and after? Can you give us an example of some of the events you improved upon? Oh man. So I think for like the 400, I, I ran like in a relay, I ran like a 49 second 400. And then this, this year I ran a 47, like six or 47, five. So shaving off a few seconds on that is huge. Yeah, and that I, hadn't, big, yeah. I hadn't run the, yeah, I hadn't run the 100, but like I was able to run a 10 point, 10 second, 10.6 on in the 100, which is like really, really competitive for mm-hmm. all decathletes. Like I think I was one of the top five guys in the nation in the 100 in decathlon. Yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a pretty impressive uh, decathlon or sorry, 100 meters for a decathlete for sure. Um, you know, you save another half second off there and then you're in the mix with the with the real with the real 100 meter sprinter guys you know what yeah. uh what is the uh um you know as far as uh the diet goes what does the diet look like for you at, the, at this point or what has it been so usually i like to eat about eight eggs in the morning with half a pound to a pound of ground beef lunch will be a pound of ground beef or some steaks and then dinner is about the same just a pound of ground beef and some steaks or i'll eat more eggs yeah it's a lot of steak that's kind of like my diet steak and eggs i did in fact i just had a big old t-bone and six eggs for breakfast just before i got up here but um do you find um are you getting any pushback from i don't, I don't know if you guys got a nutritionist on your track team or or do they anybody give me any grief about this um <laughs> So yeah, originally like my, my coaches were a little worried and they wanted me to talk to the nutritionist and, um, like I originally didn't even tell anybody I was doing it just cause I knew there was going to be pushback. So, like I started talking to them and they found out because I, I mean, I was performing really well and I was talking about it. So then they weren't as worried, but they still wanted me to go talk to the nutritionist. So I went and I had a meeting with her and she was actually pretty accepting of it, which was nice, but she was still like bringing up concerns. Like she was saying, Oh, are you getting enough vitamin C? Are you going to, are you want to do like honey after this or that? And like, eventually I kind of like tried to guide her towards some like educational videos and stuff like, like you, for instance. And help educate her a little bit but she she was really cool about it yeah that's uh i mean that's that's good to see and and again obviously low vitamin c and scurvy usually usually results in prs and pole vaults and 100 meter times right i mean it's just like doesn't make sense that you'd be getting sick if you're doing all those types of things so you won you won the big 10 championship if i'm not mistaken were you the top decathlete right yeah, I was. And then where do you go from there? Or did you say, I think you had, you've got some more stuff going on with, are you, do you have another year left or what's, what's your status right now? Yeah. So, um, so I went to nationals after big tens and I was on track to finish at sixth in the nation. And then I know I didn't pull vault, which sucked. Your but favorite event. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. And then, um, so yeah, I have, I have two more years of eligibility, so I'm going to be competing this year and next year and then at the end of next year we're gonna have olympic trials and then olympics after that so i mean that's always the goal and i I would only have to increase my score by i think like 300 points and then i would have to just finish top three in the olympic trials to qualify for the team what and you know what we're in uh I mean, is it, are you coming into indoor season now or what's, what's the status with you right now? Yeah, this is, we're about to go into preseason. I'll go back to college and then indoor season starts in the winter and 
spring is when outdoor season starts. How do you how do you feel going into the into the indoor season? How does, how do you feel right now? I'm I'm really excited because I hadn't I haven't competed in indoor season as a carnivore. And so I think that I'm going to have like a really good indoor season. I think I'm going to PR in a lot of events. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how how that plays out. Um have any of your teammates said, "Hey, man, what are you doing?" You have they noticed your performance getting better and ask you and even trying it? Um, I think I think everyone's like definitely interested in it. I don't know if anybody's actually started like going strict carnivore. If anything, maybe a few people are eating an extra beef patty at dinner, but that's about it for now. <laughs> so far, until you until you win, you know, until you blow everyone in indoor season. Do you um uh? How many – do you have any idea? So you're eating what, – what, what What are your dimensions? How tall and how much do you weigh? How tall are you? I'm about 6'6", six, six and I weigh close to 200 pounds. Okay. So you're, you're, you're going through a lot of calories, I imagine, with, uh, with that. Do you ever find – how do you uh, – do you find, like, any issues with training? Or It sounds like it's pretty good. Are you uh, finding you have to add any kind of fluid and electrolytes in to stay hydrated? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely figured out the hard way that I need electrolytes during competition because my first decathlon I competed in at running the 1500 was just terrible. And then the second decathlon I ran, I ended up just pouring salt into a cup of water and drinking that. And I like improved by 10 seconds just in the 1500. And that that made me kind of realize like oh man i need to incorporate more salt and so i started doing more and more salt and everything just got better with competition yeah you said like a 10 6 100 meter and a and a 47 second 400 and what's your what's your 1500 meter time now as a carnivore oh man like uh 440 something 442 maybe 442 yeah, yeah that's pretty that's pretty darn fast so yeah it's so, you know, I, know I just all those times are really, really hard to do, and then throwing the discus and shot and all that stuff on top of it. What's your least favorite event? Probably the 1500. 1500. <laughs> yeah, just because it's, it's, it's painful, I'm sure. I'm sure it's probably, but I mean, as far are you, I mean, like you said, you're kind of relatively better at the running events, I guess, and then maybe pole vaulting. How do you do on the how do you do on the, on the field of like the throwing events? Oh. I mean, throwing the throwing events are great too. I've been on and off with shot put. I'm about middle of the pack right now, but I think I'm going to definitely improve in that. Um, discus is one of my best events. I've, I was throwing like third in the nation and stuff out of all the decathletes. Yeah. Six, six has got to help at the long arms on the discus. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and javelin is a very new event for me. So I'm, I'm still getting used to it, but I've thrown, um, 53 meters. So. Yeah, those are, those are, that's pretty impressive. And do you find, and, and are you finding that, uh, I mean, like, like I said, just how much, like I said, with the fact that you, for some of these, this is your first year competing in the, in the, in the decathlon or last year was last season was. And so, you know, just by virtue of not, not, you know, of learning the events, like the three ones you weren't doing on the heptathlon, um, you should have, you should be able to probably pick up a couple hundred points based on that alone, I would imagine. Yeah, no, for sure. What, so what, what score do you have to get? Would you say is an, a, a, a good shot to be finishing top three Olympic trials? It's like 8,500 or what, what do you need to hit? Yeah. So I know the, the world standard mark is 8,350. And so if you get that, then you'll go to the Olympics. If But then out of all the guys who get 8350, they only take the top three at Olympic trials. So looking at the other competitors, I would say, yeah, like my goal is to go like 86 or higher by Olympic trials. Yeah, that's that'll be that'll be pretty awesome if you if you make it. I know we just had Seth Groth on here. He just made a U.S. world team. Should be on the Olympic team as a wrestler, you know, going carnivore as well. So we're seeing a number of uh, you guys getting after that and stuff. Um, anything like family or anything said anything? They think you're nuts or what's going on there? Yeah, well, actually, really interesting. My dad, I he was he's like pretty into like training and stuff like that too. So when I was gonna go onto it, I was talking to him about it, and 
he was looking into it. And then I went, I started the diet about a month later. I told, I told him, I was like, dad, you need to do this. Like, I'm not giving you an option. You got to go carnivore. And so (laughs) he went carnivore and he's been loving it so much. He feels like he's young again. He's lifting weights. He's running. He's just moving so good. And then my mom as well, like I got her to start doing it and she's feeling great. She's still incorporating a few like plants here and there. She's more on like keto paleo, but still, still doing great. Do you, um, <clears throat> I mean, and where are you getting your food from? Is it just, I mean, you are like on a meal plan at college and you just go to the cafeteria and load up on eggs and burger patties or how does that work for you? Yeah. So, um, originally I was just like going to the grocery store and bulk buying everything, you know, Costco, Meyer. um, now I'm trying to source a little bit more trying to get grass fed local, buying like half a cow, quarter cow. And I've, I've definitely found that when I eat like a grass fed burger compared to like a grain fed, I feel a lot better on the grass fed. <laughs> oh, good. I mean, and so that would be nice. Maybe I don't know if anybody's listing any ranchers out there. This guy could use some, some beef. It'd be a good sponsorship opportunity. I think that's uh that's uh well i mean are you allowed to have that i don't know if you're allowed to have that are you yeah as, as yeah new, like, new regulations we can be sponsored athletes now in college okay very nice that would be that would be a really good thing are you seeing a lot of kids in in on your track team doing plant-based diets are you seeing a lot of people adopting that you know i i think there's there's like a few people who kind of like lean towards the plant-based protein and they'll do like pea protein and stuff like that. Um, I haven't really like run into anybody who's like a hard vegan where they're like all meat is bad kind of thing, but it's definitely like obvious that like anemia is a big problem in a lot of track athletes. And I know that if they would just be eating meat instead of a plant-based protein and stuff like that it would probably help out a lot more yeah i mean particularly in a female female group would be i'd see where that would be the biggest issue there do you what is your training so what does your training look like i guess are you back home are you i guess you're not at the camp i mean maybe you're just ready head, heading back to campus but are you where do you where do you normally live and what have you been doing this summer yeah i'm in i'm in grand rapids michigan right now and this summer i've kind of just been like taking a break from the usual training schedule and just I've been like lifting a little bit more and just like in the preseason, I kind of like to bulk up a little bit because then you go into preseason training, you start running a lot more, you might lose a little bit of that weight, but retain the strength. So I'm probably a little bit heavier now than I would be going in season. But once, once we get there in a few months, I'll, I'll be feeling great. And um, training wise, when we're like in season, Usually we're doing technique work on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and we'll do sprints on Monday. We'll do a workout on Wednesday and maybe even something else on Saturday. Do you, uh, I mean, do you, do you work with a coach in the off season or is it allowed or can you do that to work on certain things? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You can work with, you can even work with their like collegiate coach for a little bit, especially if it's like for safety reasons. Like if I want to train pole vault, my coach can come watch me for safety reasons, help me out a little bit, you know. Um, also, there's like all these there's great clubs and camps to do and personal personal coaches for each event. It's, it's very helpful for decathlon. What is your what height did you get on pole vault? What's your what is your height on that? So I jumped um, five meters, 20 centimeters, which is around 17 feet. Yeah, I was going to guess because what, what the world record is like 19 or something like that. I can't remember where they're at, at something like that. Yeah, he jumped he jumped six meters, 21, which is probably like 20 feet some. Oh, okay. And I, I remember when a guy named Sergey Bupka had it for years and he kept breaking it. He'd break his own record by like a quarter inch just so he kept getting paid every time he broke his record or something. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. So how do you, um, as far as, um, you know, are you training multiple times throughout the day? Are you doing more than one? Or is it usually one workout a day? Um, like this, this summer I've kind of done like two or three workouts a day a few times, but usually in season we'll only, we'll, we'll have one workout a day, but then 
Monday, Wednesday, Friday, when we lift, it'll be two workouts. So you run and then hour later you go lift. How do you manage your meals around a two workout thing? Do you find you have to eat something in between to be able to recover well, or do you do any like ice baths or anything like that? Or how do you, how do you recover for your second workout? Yeah. Um, with the, with the food, it's really nice being carnivore because I find that I don't need to constantly snack throughout the day. And so if I go do a workout on the track and then I have to wait like 30 minutes and go lift, I'm not having this feeling of, oh, I got to shove down this protein bar, or this like snack to energize my lift. Like I already feel really energized from just like carnivore. Um, if I need a snack, maybe I'll just like eat a little like bit of like meat or like pemmican or something like that. Um, usually that's not the case though. And I've actually found that like, I, I feel like I perform better when I'm a little bit more hungry, a little bit more empty stomach, you know, like not, not a full 24 hour fast, but like maybe a little bit fasted going into my workouts. What percentage of your teammates just eat garbage? I mean, is, is it most people just eating junk all the time or how many of them are actually care about their nutrition and their diet? Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot, a lot of people care about their nutrition. It's just that um, it's like there's so many outlets and sources to figure out what the optimal nutrition is that like, okay, I'm, I got told I need to eat fiber from the nutritionist, so I'm going to eat fiber. Like, it's not like they're doing it on purpose but like there's a lot of like misguidedness in the nutrition world for athletes and i think that um there's a lot of people who think that they can just eat a bag of candy on the bus ride home and get away with it well and perhaps it can for the short term but i mean as far as you know because what what directed you here was you know maybe gut issues and stuff like that how how are those things doing did you notice any other benefits outside of athletic performance oh man like my gut health improved like insanely i felt so amazing and then like my mental clarity improved like a lot and like as an as an athlete and also a student at msu like classes got easier going on a carnivore diet like i felt like i could focus better in school i felt like i was learning better i felt like i was retaining more knowledge i was able to score better on tests um And then also I noticed like, just like physical things, like my skin was more clear. I wasn't getting sunburnt as easily. I was recovering from extreme sun exposure way faster. Like my lips don't really get chapped. My allergies are gone. Like all, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah. It's almost like, it's like you're just a better human being overall, mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, just across the board when you eat, you know, nutrition, it's, uh, uh, you know, what we're aligned to eat, I believe. Do you, um, you know, there, there's a couple of questions in here about, uh, at Michigan state, there's a, there's a professor, Jason Roundtree who works a lot in the ag department. I mean, what, what is your field of study? I guess. Um, I'm a kinesiology major. So I pretty much took that to learn more about sports, sports performance, right, athletic sure. yeah. performance. Yeah, I got it. There's a lot of kinesiology majors that are athletes for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as, um, when it comes to decathlon, I mean, as far as the training, how how much, like, is there like a uh, sort of certain paradigm on how you're supposed to lift to be a decathlete? Is it mostly a lot of uh, like Olympic lifting or explosivity, or is it more bodybuilding stuff? Or what do you what do you what do you focus on? Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of Olympic lifting. We'll do cleans or snatches every week. We're doing bench press or some type of incline press, a lot of chest work for the shot put in the discus. Um, you're squatting, you're doing box squats, step ups, squat jumps. Um, yeah, a lot of really explosive power movements Mm -hmm. and not so much the bodybuilder get a pump kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how I've always trained when I was throwing as a Highland games athlete, it was a lot of just being able to move a lot of weight very quickly. And you see like, particularly some of the, like dedicated throwers some of the shot and discus guys they're just animals i mean it's, yeah. it's amazing how much they can move and stuff like that is there is there like can you be like 66 240 and still be a decathlete or is that just going to be too heavy 
It, it all depends. I mean, I'm I'm six six, and I feel very comfortable at like two hundred pounds. I think I could go to two fifteen and be okay. But I know there's there's another decathlete who is like six four, six five, and he looks like a, a friggin' linebacker. He's huge, and he has to like weight cut sometimes for decathlons just because he'll bulk up so much. Yeah, I mean, he would. I mean, obviously, the sixteen hundred would be a challenge, and I imagine some, maybe even the four hundred, some of the other ones, but maybe the, the pole vault too. I guess I'm just kind of a high jump pole vault. I yeah. think all those ones would make it harder uh, to do that. So there's kind of a sweet spot. What are the typical guys like? You know, uh, was it Dan O'Brien? I can't remember the, some of the top pole vaulters. Obviously, Bruce Jenner from when I was a little kid. But what's the typical size for guys that, that make it to the Olympics? Is it is is there a typical size range? Yeah, there's there's actually some really cool like graphs online that just show like height to weight ratios for the top like three Olympic medalists in the past like seven Olympics and stuff like that. But um you see the the general pattern is that they're gonna be tall and like obviously way more bulky than a distance runner, but you're still gonna be pretty lean. So I know like looking at the ratios. Like if you're six foot, you're going to be somewhere around 185 to 195 on the high range. If you're like me or like six, six, you're going to be around like 200, 215. Yeah. So probably getting, getting there will, will obviously benefit the throws for sure. You know, putting up a little more and if you just maintain this, get stronger and, and speed wise. Um, do you uh, like, like for instance, how are you doing a lot of top end, like, one rep maxes and stuff like that, you know, like snatches and stuff like that. Or are you still staying higher rep ranges? Yeah, it's, um, we have our strength coach is really good on that. He'll program everything in, but usually we're early season, higher reps. Once you get towards competition and the weeks that you do compete, you'll probably be doing like a one rep, two rep max at like 80%, 90% weight just to really initiate that and get the central nervous system firing and ready for competition. How much can you see your strength moving up in the lifts? And did you see your strength start to move up? And I mentioned, you mentioned that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was doing like dumbbell, dumbbell bench and kind of like consistent around like the one hundreds went on carnivore and got up to like one thirty, one forty like on dumbbell bench, which was like really crazy too, because I was doing like sets of six and struggling with the one hundreds. Now I'm doing like 130, 140 easy. Yeah. Like six, six. That's impressive. That's long arms. I mean, yeah. I know I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm six, five. I know the same thing as a pain to bench uh, uh -huh. just because of the length of the arms and stuff like that. So that's, that's really, uh, I mean, it's really neat to see how, how well you've progressed with all that stuff. Do you see a correlation between your throws? I, I used to get sidetracked and get too obsessed about the lifting and, <laughs> and not focus on you know, instead of and not focusing on the technique for throwing. But do you see a pretty good correlation between if my snatch is so far, I'm going to be able to throw the discus a little farther? Or, you know, has, has there been a correlation with that? Yeah, I, I think so. I think there's definitely power in those like Olympic lifts, but then like technique is so important and you'll see guys bench pressing like 300 pounds who can't throw the shot put very far because they don't know how to use their legs you know and then you see guys squatting like 300 pounds who can't throw the shot put because they don't know how to connect everything together and so i think lifting helps when you know how to use those muscles that you've gained yeah and it takes a long time to figure that figure that out for sure um are you uh like i said as far as a shot put is concerned, are you, are you, are you, do you rotate or do you glide for your shot put? Probably glide. Yeah, I, guess. So I don't know. Originally, originally I was gliding yeah. and I was throwing like 13 meters. And then I was getting pretty frustrated because I started doing worse in the glide. So then I started messing around with the rotation. And then I rotated like 14 and a half meters, like one of my first meets. So I'm a rotator now. <laughs> I used to train with a guy named John Godina, who was a who was a really good shot discus guy. I don't know if you're familiar. He's out in Arizona, and he was teaching me some of that stuff. It's very it's very technically challenging to do that stuff. I'll just put that out there and to try to do try to do that and be good at ten events is 
uh, really impressive. Where do you think you're going to make your biggest gains this year as far as time? You know, I mean, obviously, I, you know, the hundred meter, you're probably close to, I don't know, maybe you make, maybe you can take another two tenths or something like that, but you got less room. Where do you have the most room to make pick up, uh, pick up points? Yeah, I think um, my high jump and my long jump are definitely areas where I can gain like two, 200, 400 points in. Um, they weren't like my main events in high school and like being tall helps, but it's, it's mostly like the more reps you do, the better you get at it. And I think that like my first two years of college, I kind of got cut short one because of COVID and the other because of injury. And so just staying like injury free and healthy is going to give me more reps in those events. And I'm going to be able to improve much faster. Yeah, I would imagine with a 10, 6, 100 meters, you should be a pretty decent long jumper if you can just turn that speed and, you know, into the technical side of it. But do yeah. you, as far as injury, what kind of injuries were you having? And I mean, just like minor things were keeping you out, or do you ever get like, like strains? And I mean, because sometimes you still strain, you still, just by the nature of what you're doing, you're, you're likely to, to, to strain something. Do you find you ever get that and you, you recover very quickly? Yeah. So, like before, before carnivore, it was, pretty common for me to get like a groin injury where it would just it would be like a small strain and then I would push through it and it would turn worse and then same thing with like hamstring my left hamstring because it's the leg I use for hurdling gets strained pretty often if I'm like not careful about it and then like going carnivore has definitely helped and improved that and i don't feel like i'm straining and pulling muscles as as quickly um it was interesting actually the first decathlon that i had an opportunity to go to which was uh my sophomore year i i couldn't go to it because i had like injured my ankle and then the next decathlon i was going to go to sophomore year i like injured my hamstring so then like both of those took me out. And then junior year, I had an opportunity to do a decathlon in Arizona and I injured my hamstring like 10 days before that decathlon. And it it felt the same as or worse than like past hamstring injuries. And I like couldn't walk without pain. 10 days later, I feel almost recovered and I'm, I do a whole entire decathlon and end up winning that decathlon. That's, that's, that's definitely pretty impressive to see the healing power. I mean, there's, there's a lot of studies on, well, there's a number of studies out there in the, in the medical literature looking at plant-based people versus people eat meat and they see the plant-based ones don't eat very well. They don't heal very well. Uh, and it takes them a mm -hmm. long, long time to heal from injuries. And so it just makes sense that you are healing faster on a, on a carnivore based diet. Um, what do you, uh, so are you, have you, you know, sort of had to change anything? Are you changing anything as, as you approach this season? Are you thinking about doing anything different? Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm experimenting like a few times every once in a while. I like incorporate a little bit of cheese here and there. Um, I want to try like raw dairy. But I don't, I'm like, I'm just hesitant because I haven't really drank in milk my whole life. Um, I think like there's great benefit to consuming like milk if you want to like bulk up and add some weight. But I definitely enjoy being light, fast and lean. And so like, I think that once I'm in season, I'm just going to be pretty strict on it. And I find that my body gets to a really comfortable weight. Are you like focusing on hitting a certain amount of protein, um, macronutrients? Are you more higher fat or what is your, what is your sort of, what do you, what do you focus on? Uh, I think originally I was definitely needing more fat. Like right when I switched to carnivore, I was craving fat and I was trying to get as much fat as I could. And then I think my body kind of evened out after that. And now, now I feel like I need more protein just because my body's trying to create so much glucose from that. Um, and yeah, I don't really, I don't really count calories. I don't really track too much other than I just make sure that I can get close to three pounds of meat a day, plus a lot of eggs because I feel really good when I eat eggs. Yeah. And so when you're, you know, as far as like, you know, going through a five event decathlon and you start up with a hundred and then you do, you know, the other four events in there, 
Is there like a pattern where you like, I'm refueling, you know, in between, or am I having uh, some electrolyte or how do you, how do you manage How do you, how do you manage the days? Yeah. Originally, like, I mean, you see this with a lot of guys that like after each event, they got some like dextrose or multidextrose, some, some like gel that they're squeezing in their mouth or drinking a Gatorade, getting some sugar in. And like, I used to be the same way, but now, now it's more of like, I know that my body's going to be mobilizing fat and I'm going to be burning a lot of energy and creating as much energy as I can. So usually I just like before decathlon, I'll eat like four raw eggs, which is not much, but it's just a little bit. And then hopefully it's like three, four hours before I compete. I got an empty stomach when I compete, I start competing and I'll be good. I don't really need to eat anything until high jump, which is the fourth event on the first day. I'll snack on something just for a little bit high jump and then by the 400 my stomach feels pretty empty again i feel good to run um and it's about the it's about the same for day two and so usually like i'm only eating like four raw eggs a little bit of pemmican during the event and then like a big steak for dinner and that's like my whole meal that day yeah, so you're kind of fueling loading the night before with, with protein and steak, you know, and not eating. You're not probably eating less on a on a competition day than a normal day, correct? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and and as far as your you know your season goes, I mean, you, are you hitting each of the events every week, or do you guys focus on one day you do this, one day you do that, or how does that work? Yeah, so um, usually we'll do hurdles Monday, Tuesday will be one of the jumps and a workout. Wednesday we'll throw and we can usually throw two events and then Thursday we'll jump and run again. Friday we'll do a workout and then Saturday or Sunday we'll do another throw day. So we get almost every event in on this, on that week, except for maybe one of the jumps. We usually do two jumps a week and alternate. Do you have a, like, do you have a different strategy per depending upon the day or do you just kind of, is it pretty much most days the same? Um, usually, yeah, usually I just try and eat a little bit before practice. So I have like two, three hour gap after my first meal and then just eat big after practice. What is your, so your upcoming season, do you have any predictions on or, or, or goals for the in- indoor season, the outdoor season? Let's just give us a prediction. Like if, if things work out, like you think they will, where do you think, what do you think you'll be doing this, this season? Yeah. Um, I definitely want to go to nationals indoor season. I want to finish top eight in the nation indoors. I would love to finish top five in the nation for outdoors and um, just more chances to compete. I think, I think you could compete for like the USA meet. Um, It's, they do it every year. It's just like, um, the USA national meet between like everyone, not just collegiate. And so like qualifying going to that would be pretty cool as well. So you could, I mean, I guess technically you could be on the 2020, 2024 Olympic team and 2028, those two teams would be realistic yeah. for you. Yeah, for sure. Maybe yeah. More. And I think, I think that you see with a lot of decathletes is the older you are, the better your score is usually because you just get more time training. Mm-hmm. And so I definitely, I definitely want to hit the 2024 Olympics. If not, I'm probably going to shoot for going for like a 2028 and maybe even if I'm brave enough, go for like a 32, I'll be an old man by then. Right. <laughs> well, it depends, it depends on your, your definition of old. I, I It gets older and older for me, the older I get, but right. Yeah. Unfortunately I have to run, but it's been awesome chatting with you. Um, I know you got some social media, so let us let know let folks know where they can find out more if they other athletes want to contact you. I'm sure you're happy to chat with them, I imagine. I would assume, but where do they go to find you? Yeah, I think the best way to contact me is on Instagram, just underscore Ryan underscore Talbot underscore. Um and yeah, feel free to reach out, DM me. I love answering questions. Awesome. Well, thanks, Ryan. Good luck to you. Let me know. Let me know how things go this season. I love we're going to keep an eye on you and, and hopefully uh, we'll see some big wins for you. Uh, yeah. When's your, when, when's your first meet going to be? Oh, man, I don't even know. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> not for some time november or something like that perhaps or is it yeah maybe yeah okay man take care ryan good luck keep up the good work keep inspiring people thank you so much rest of you guys thanks everybody we'll see you guys back tomorrow take care everybody bye-bye now yeah awesome thank you